why would I care about There's a military penal, penal system which yeah. uh, treats um, the crimes committed by the par by the military. But it's not at the but, level. No, no, no. But these kind of crimes, because they are um, because they are su sufficiently serious crimes, have to be transferred to the ordinary justice system. So if they are not transferred to the ordinary justice system, then the military is dealing with them themselves, and there is typically more impunity within the military than in the ordinary justice system. So that's a whole issue in Colombia. And I'm going to show you that an important thing here is whether locally the, ju the, ju the, the, the judicial system was able to respond, look at the, at the case, and take the case, and not let it be handled by the, by the military system. So in that sense, local institutions were important. Local judicial, ordinary, order of the ordinary uh, judicial system. You have another. Yeah, I was going to ask that question. One thing that occurred to me is that um, it seems like a lot of the discovery of corruption is driven by media institutions, and I wonder if the interesting variation is in the presence of local media. Yeah. It could be, and there are many places where probably we didn't know about this happening because there's no one there. But I'm going to show you the source of our data, and I'm going to argue that I don't think we have systematic biases in terms of where we are learning from this or not. But local media did play a role. Um, I thought your point was different. I thought your point was about measurement, but it was about the strength of the institutions. Ah, I see, I see. Using this as a measure of how easy and OK, yeah, that would be great. That would be great. Instead of looking at, it's easier to falsify in a place where there is no media because there's no transparency. That would be great, but we don't have very good measures of media penetration at the local level in Colombia. Not even local radio? Is it radio that... Uh, we have some with radio. Um, although I think here the most important are the journalists from local newspapers. But we have some data for, journal, for, for, for radio, and maybe we could exploit that, and we think we haven't. Um, that's a good point. We haven't used... I think it's more important the local journalists from newspapers, but we don't have any good data for, for local penetration of newspapers in Colombia. We have nothing similar to the Audit Bureau of Circulation in the US, which allows you to look at this at the CICO level. No, the industry used to have some circulation figures, but they lied all the time so that they could get more uh, advertisement. And when they, everyone knew that everyone was lying, they decided, OK, so let's do a survey. So now they do a survey in the main cities, which is 90% of the market, which is what advertisers care about. But of course, for economists running regressions, it really sucks. So. <laughs> <laughs> do you have local literacy level? Huh? Do you have local literacy level? Um, yeah, we do have that. Because you're not going to sell these papers before I don't really get literacy. Lots of pictures. Yeah, there, there's this paper by Yeah. Biden and uh, it was about Ferraz and Fa yeah. yeah the, no, it could be. I, 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 your point about radio, I mean, I think that local, because this implies a guy who goes and does that and writes an investigation and so on, but it could be a local radio plays a role, and, and that I think we can measure some of it. It's not great data, but we have some. So the, the point of radio is well taken, and we should look at it. Okay, I, I'm no, just. I have yeah. unrelated point, which, before I forget. Uh huh. Is, uh, could it be that kernels are just enough? I mean, because. Right. So these used to be like they have a much harder time displaying their guys, yeah. right? Yeah, that could be. Uh, we cannot completely rule that out. Yeah. I don't have any formal kind of regression to rule that out. We're, going, we're trying to get data of like soldier dismissals and disciplinary actions against soldiers to see colonels are harder or softer or whatever than generals. Uh, but that's data that comes from the army. And trying to get data from the army in Colombia, it's really hard. Everything is national security, no matter if you are friends with a guy who works in the army, whatever. It's really hard to get data from them. So I don't have any kind of hard data to, to disprove that hypothesis, so I cannot completely say that it's not partly that. However, talking to the people who work in the Ministry of Defense and the army and so on, they say, no, look, this is a strongly hierarchical <laughs> system. You obey whoever is superior to you. Even a soldier who is just a soldier but is called a dragoniante, which is something more than just you, you obey, and if he says you have to do something horrible, you have to do something horrible. So the, the, the notion is that no, that they are, they have as much control as the generals, but I, I, aside from this anecdotal evidence, uh, up to this point, I don't have any kind of hard evidence. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah, I see that. Uh, yeah, we, I think we have. Yeah, we, I'm going to show you things that include a double interaction, not a triple interaction, as the one that you're suggesting, which 
like places where it's easier to massify, and we have columns. We've done some of that, and it lies on the direction that we expect, but it's typically not very powerful. I mean, we do have some significant effects there, but I mean, this was very, I mean, there are a lot of false positives in Colombia, but there are not that many that we have a lot of statistical power. Um, but, uh, but true, that's, that's, that's something that could help get, a, get around that a hypothesis. Yeah. Uh, were there risks in the media? Were there, sorry? Risk in the media, the people who were reporting this, were they at risk for? for uh, were yes, the, many people were at risk for reporting this. The, the, uh, I don't know of a uh, journalist that has been killed for this, but many of the witnesses have been killed. So witnesses in key trials have been killed for providing information about this. So that's why, on the one hand, it's hard to get data from the army. On the other hand, you also don't want to push the army too hard into giving you data. So when we first contacted the army to give us some data, we were actually intimidated a bit. They were very nice, but they were like, I don't know, and, and, and like I said, I'm completely like firearm illiterate, so anything that sounds to firearm are really scared. So we just <laughs> ask them, we need this data. So what? Why does the civilian need this data? They say that and just like, uh, no, this is from our research. This is national security. And I, they, weren't, they weren't mean, but we were already scared just with that. So we said, OK. <laughs> and the day after, there was like some news story saying that this witness in one of the cases in the false positives was killed. So we said, OK. <laughs> we don't want to ask them too much. Yeah. What the specific assignment of coronals and, and surgeons to the regions? So I mean, one story that you, you can have is one idea, like those clear cases, and so sort of easy job to target sergeants as a threat for, like, for all the job they've been doing, you know, and you want to get the hard job to the coral. And somehow at the moment, <coughs> you, know, you have an increase in, in, in activity, you make, and, and you extend the, the coral precisely to this location, mechanically, you're going to observe that they're, they're, they're even more, more positive. Yeah. So there's one just, that's a makeup of the situation. That's, that's a makeup, yeah. Region. So there, there were some brigades that were created explicitly in the effort to extend the power of the military, which were called the mobile brigades. All of them were commanded by colonels, and we don't include them here. Because we don't have variation, they were all by colonels, and they are kind of different brigades. We are looking at the brigades which have been led by colonels or generals. So in a sense... But do you know anything, anything about this, any correlation between the assignment and the existing pre-level violence or expected... No, but we're not going to see in the specification that we're going to control for the existing pre-levels of violence. I'm going to, in the end, look at an introduction term of the introduction of the incentives, and we will have coronals or generals. Could we ask, uh, could I ask, on um, behalf of Lassis, that we leave a little more to finish? Because I can see it's only to the 19th of <laughs> Okay. <laughs> this is not lunchtime and dinner. Uh, like <laughs> okay. <laughs> we can ask questions later. Um, so... We're going to test this, but before we test it with systematic data, let me tell you some anecdotal evidence that tells us that this is kind of uh, a plausible story. So first of all, there is institutional weakness and easiness to falsify in Colombia. There are a bunch of institutions in Colombia, the Office of the Attorney General, which is the Fiscalia, and the judges, which is uh, the ones who collect all the evidence that the Fiscalia uh, provides and tries to, to, to make a case. The Inspector General, which is the one who is in charge of disciplinary actions, uh, disciplinary the, uh, actions against the um, public servants, and that includes the military, and the and the ombudsman, which is the collect complaints from the from the citizens. These are all instances which at the local level have presence, but if one of several of these branches and they do um, exhibit that is corrupt or, or inefficient at the local level, you are more likely to think that you can get away with a killing. So. Uh, just to give you some, some numbers on that, out of the 1,000 plus <coughs> killings that the, that, the, um, that the Fiscalia has been assigned, uh, by 2009, only 16 were result, uh, resulted in convictions. So it's really slow and efficient. Now, if you look at the uh, at, at, uh, testimony from witnesses from these cases, the importance of local institutions also pops out. So for example, this is the case against Colonel, Colonel Mejia, which is a guy who stroke a deal with paramilitaries who would kill so-called guerrilla members, give them to Mejia, and Mejia would exhibit them, exhibit them as guerrillas killed in combat. So one thing, he was looking for promotions and glory. He's saying he was just not doing it for the money, because the, the paramilitaries were giving him some money for this. He was also doing it for the glory. And Las Bajas, the killings, are the glory. And he actually was promoted to general. And <laughs> after, 90, uh, after 19 false uh, guerrilla members were killed, the witness says, well, 
that was presented as a great positive, as, 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 a, as a great positive outcome, and he had no trouble in doing that because he had the help of the local director of the attorney general uh, office. So the local institutions were actually key in making this easy or not. And there's another testimony here, but let me just um, skip that because I, I want to move on to tell you the, 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 the basic result. Now, how about the importance of rewards? This is a rare look into what happened inside the government by Wikileaks. So we have to thank Wikileaks for this. This is a cable uh, from uh, Ambassador, um, I can't remember who, which was the ambassador at the time in, 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 in Colombia. Um, no, 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 but the US ambassador. The US ambassador is sending this to, uh, to, the, to, to, to uh, a, a, a report uh, to the US government <coughs> saying that they talked to the Inspector General Suarez. Who is the Inspector General Suarez was the guy inside the army who was in charge of looking what went wrong, why did we produce all these false positives. And Suarez is saying, look, this is started, uh, this is widespread. This is started this guy Montoya, which is uh, quoted here, is the guy who wanted to see liters of, 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 of blood. Um, and he said this was a, a bunch of things that had to do with the insistence of body counts as a measure of success. And here he's saying, despite some instructions of the Minister of Defense to the contrary. And also he's saying when this was, when, 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 when this was, uh, the first measures were taken to try to control this, uh, there was some resistance on high rank uh, army officers who still thought that it was very important to say to the troops and to the colonels and so on that the measure of success is you have to kill a lot of guerrilla members. So they were really uh, judging people by that and the uh, uh, army members probably expected that if they did well here, they would get promoted, vacations, rewards, and so on. But now let's move to some more systematic evidence on these two predictions. So let me tell you a bit about the data. Of course, this is something that is not simple to measure. Our data sor source is CNET, which is an NGO connected to the Company of Jesus. So these are priests. And that's good for us, because in Colombia, in every municipality, you may be lacking some institution, but something that you are not lacking is a church. <laughs> so they are present everywhere. And they basically collect information from a variety of sources, local media, their own information from the judges, uh, talking to us, uh, victims association in the local areas. So of course, there may be anti-reporting, but are you ever going to have a relatively coherent and complete um, information is probably from these guys. Um, as I said, they combine information based on a lot of sources. And uh, one thing that is probably positive uh, for us is that the fact that they combine this information and try to verify implies that we don't have the obvious bias that the official counts have, which is that they tend to underreport either because they want to hide the problem partly or because of geographic biases. There are places where just the local, the, the state institutions are not so present. It also doesn't have the other kind of bias which com can come from victims associations, in which perhaps there was a guerrilla member in the family and they're just saying that he was a good boy, but actually he wasn't a good boy, he was a, a, a member of the guerrilla. Um, yeah, good boy is a, is, it's a politically charged term in Colombia because that's the way President Uribe uh, used to refer to some of his associates who end up, ended up being related to paramilitary. So I should probably not say good boy. <laughs> I say good boy and I immediately think of a mean guy. So, okay. <laughs> so our data set includes every episode of arbitrary execution and unlawful detentions of, of the rebels compiled by CNEP. And from, if, from every case, we know the date and the place of recruitment and, the, and of execution of the victim, whether the victim was presented as a member of the guerrilla, the paramilitaries, or an unknown rebel group, whether the perpetrators, alleged perpetrators, are from the army, police, or navy, and whether there is or not an ongoing investigation connected with the crime. Now, most of the cases, the, men, the, the, the alleged, um, the, they were presented as alleged guerrilla members, 74%. Uh, of the cases where uh, these, these civilians were presented as guerrilla members, 3% as paramilitaries, and 21% as other or unknown. If you look at who were the perpetrators, it's mostly the army, and actually we're going to focus in this regression on the army. Mostly the army, less, less the, the police, and the other, which is basically um, the navy and the armed forces, 3%. Um, so, uh, I, I think I already talked about the potential biases. Um, let me just add with here that actually we, if anything, we have a quite conservative measure. So we don't think we're actually including false, false positives in our, 
in our data set because we are including cases that involve uh, 1,500 victims, the journalistic accounts and victim association accounts quote as many as, as, as 3,000 victims. Now, we have to measure judicial efficiency. So, so how do we do that? Do we do this? The first line is the way I would like to, play, uh, to explain this, uh, although Daron doesn't like this way to explain it, but uh, he's not here, so I can do it. Uh, which is, we want to measure how efficient the judicial system is at the local level. So what do we do? We look at the total cases that the, total cases, sorry, that the judicial system in a municipality was able to close relative to the total cases that they received. That's just efficiency. And you can close cases by just saying like, okay, no one, we have no idea of who the, of who the potential perpetrator is, so we have to close the case, there's no evidence, there's nothing, and we close it. And, and that's not really a good measure. So we want to correct that for a measure of quality. And quality is the difference between the total cases that were resolved and the unresolved cases. What are unresolved cases? Are the cases where uh, terms expire, there is absolutely no evidence, uh, the thing is uh, sent to another court and, and they don't do no anything about it and things like that. And the product of that is a measure of quality adjusted efficiency of the local judiciary. Okay? And if you want to look at adjust this ratio, then it's just this ratio. Okay? Um, So closed is that you, it's no longer under ju your jurisdiction. You just decided that there's, that, that, that this, this, this uh, case is over, but you didn't necessarily uh, found a, a person who was guilty or established that the person who was accused was definitely not guilty. You just basically said, oh, terms expired, for example. And I have the full list, sorry, but there are several ways in which the, in which the judges can just kind of say, uh, this is it, but they don't do anything really of substance about it. So that's what we try to do, to code the things that are of substance and the things that are just like um, not dealing with the, with the problem. Okay, um, one thing that is not ideal, but it's, that's the only thing that we can do is that this is measured from 2008 to 2010. Because before then, we simply have no data. There was an implementation of a new judicial system. In Colombia, systematic data is only available from these years on. So you could say, okay, but that's after the, 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 the false positives. You would like to measure this at the start. Yes, we would like to, but there's absolutely no data for that. Uh, and in our defense, uh, local institutions don't change overnight. We expect places to be uh, weak in terms of local judicial institutions in 2008 to be strongly correlated to places which are weak in terms of local institutions at the beginning of the period. Now, how about identifying army ranks? I told you already that it's really scary or it's really difficult or both to get uh, data from the army. So what do you do? Um, we were unable to obtain the data from them. So we managed to partially reconstruct the organizational uh, structure of the, of the army by doing the following. The current division, which is the number, positioning, jurisdiction, and commanders of division, battalions, and brigades, brigades is the level that we look at, is available from the army website. But that's the current division. What about the historical division? There's this great tool, which is called the Wayback Machine from the Internet Archive. And so we look at backdated versions of the website from the army, and we're able to do a lot. We still have holes. When we have holes, what, what do we do? We look at online sources, notably the, the main national newspaper in Colombia has a pretty good um, uh, online archive. And we look at the news in which the people are promoted and assigned and so on, and we reconstruct with the, with the news stories to fill most gaps. Um, and so that's, that's basically what we do. And then we match this information to the information from CINEP, which tells us which is the alleged brigade um, in, uh, responsible for, for the false positive in, in, in question. So with this, we have a very simple empirical strategy. So let me explain it to you. We are measuring that the, as a dependent variable, the false positive in municipality M at time t. And our main coefficient of interest in the first empirical strategy, which is the one that looks at army ranks, that is our first prediction, is looking at the interaction between whether the municipality is under the jurisdiction of a brigade that is laid by a, by a colonel, so colonel MT equals one if the commander is a colonel, and the interaction of that with a post dummy, which is one after the high power incentives were introduced. When were the high power incentives introduced? We don't know exactly. So we have to move the window a bit. So we move it around 2005, 6, and 7. We also did 4, and it's the same. It's arbitrary, but we know at least we have kind of a 
focal point is the direct of 2005, and we'll know exactly when that trickled down to the, to the rest of the troops. But it could also happen before, because there are other directives that maybe we wouldn't know. So, I mean, where I'm presenting in year 2005, 6, and 7, we will do it with four similar and so on, but we have, that's the best thing we can do. Now, things to notice. Of course, we are looking at the interaction effect. We're including municipality fixed effects. What we're looking at is at the differential increase, controlling for the extent of prevalence of false positives even before these high incentives, uh, after the inclusion of these incentives. We have time fixed effects that control for any nationwide trend, which as we know, there was a nationwide trend in this production of false positives. And then the other very important term is this very large agony term over here, which is basically taking for a bunch of municipality characteristics Xn, a four degree polynomial in those characteristics interacted with the post -dom. So the main concern here is that, well, these places, municipalities led by colonels, are not really producing a lot of false positives because the colonel is there. It's more something like the story that uh, Horacio was saying before. Maybe those guys were assigned there because there was something special to do there. So we want to control for a bunch of things of municipality M and see whether that municipality M performs differently after the introduction of incentives for reason other than the colonels itself. So we have a very rich set of controls. Uh, it's so long that I'm not going to be able to present it to you, but I'm going to tell you which types of controls there are when I present the tables. And they are controlled for in a very uh, flexible way by a four degree polynomial interacted with the post term. So that's one strategy. Second strategy, you would probably guess it, is the same story, but just with judicial efficiency at the municipality end. And again, the key, the key interaction of interest is this one. In the other case, we expected the beta to be positive, more false positives in places where the coronals were in charge. Here, we expect it to be negative, less false positives in places where there is more judicial efficiency. And again, we have the same key terms to be able to deal with the potential compound. So that's the basic empirical strategy. Uh, we have a bunch of descriptive statistics here that I probably won't going to use when we, no, actually, uh, this, is, this is actually quite telling. If you look at the number of false positives by rank of brigade, this is at the municipality level. Overall, there were 0 0.07 false positives produced in the full sample throughout the whole years. If you break out between colonel and general, there are more false positives produced in places led by colonels. But of course, that could be for other differences. The important thing is that this difference is especially notable after whatever you call it, 2005, 6, or 7, that before. Even there's one year in which this is negative. And there's one year in which is positive, but it's when we take the later part that we are including here, probably part of the difference in the prior year. Okay? But there, there were already incentives in place uh, in, this, in this lower part. Now, with the efficiency of institutions, same story. There is a difference in which there is more false positive producing low efficiency places, but that difference actually comes out from the post period when high, where the, where the high power incentives, we expect them to be present. And no matter how you measure on high power incentives, either, either after 2005, six or seven. So now, what I'm going to show you is the regression version of that, with all the controls and without the controls and so on. So, we're looking here at either the number of false positives or just the dummy variable for, the, for whether there was a false positive incident. Those are columns one and two versus three and four. The odd columns don't have any control and are looking just at the interaction term. And of course, I'm not showing you, but the, we always have the year and municipality fixed effects. And the, and the odd columns have the full set of controls. We have one control for the scale, which is the population. We have seven geographical controls. We have four conflict and crime controls, which have to do with attacks with the guerrilla from the paramilitary, from uh, incidents of crime. We have education controls and so on. Income and rent, which has to do with some uh, fiscal, uh, fiscal variables, natural resources, state presence. The state presence is very important, and that's why we got a bit too excited with that. We have 22 controls on, on that. That's because uh, in, the, in the case of the institutional regressions in particular, uh, you want to make sure that this is something that has to do with the fact that you think that you can get away with a murder there and not with a general thing that has to do with the order uh, and, and in the municipality. So even controlling for a very rich set of state presence controls, the judicial characteristics matter. Yeah? I thought you had three periods, right? Pre, post, and then post, post after this kind of came out and they changed the rules. Yeah, that's a good point. We haven't exploited that too much uh, just because we have very, so, so, yeah, what Horacio was referring to, I don't know if everyone is following, is basically that there was this removal of incentives, right? In late 2008. Uh -huh. 
Uh, we only have actually one year, which is 2009. I forgot to say that, in that the, our data gets to 2010 <coughs> and to the early part of 2010. This is yearly, so we don't actually include more of the regression 2010. Um, the post period. So we could do that, the, the post post period, that is when the remote is incentives. Now, it's the mirror. The thing is that post positive is fell to practically zero everywhere. So it's the mirror, uh, uh, it's the mirror image of the increase. Okay, so I could do that, but it's actually cheating as if I have two sources of variation, I have just really only one. Uh, what, I, what we could do abroad, it's better is just to drop the post, post, post year because no action, there's no action there. Uh, and actually that's being here pulled with the post period. Uh, so that's probably actually underestimating our effect. So, so that's a good point. I mean, we know, we know this for long, but we haven't just, yeah, good point. Um, because, yeah. It basically fell to zero after that, and, and we shouldn't be using that. Uh, good. So, so this is the the, the, the effects that we find, um, and here we we see uh, therefore that the introduction having coronal uh, actually increases the um, incidence of false positives much more than uh, or let me say the, the other way around because it's a difference in differences. The increase in the incidence of false positives is much bigger in places that were led, led by cardinals than in places that were not led by cardinals. Uh, and that increase is actually large. Uh, it's, it's at least in the, in the smallest specification. It's as in, you look at the number of false positives, for example, it amounts uh, to near, uh, at, well, the average is very low. It was something like 0 0.07, <coughs> right? So this implies probably a doubling of the of the of the false positive incidence in terms of the standard deviation is 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 quite big also as well so we have we see what